Good morning. I hope everybody is doing okay today. First of all, um, glory to God for another day that we are here. Happy Lord's Day, everybody. And um, of course, I would like to uh, say uh, welcome and uh, thank you for visiting us to our sister Deborah and sister Jenny. Thank you for um, being here with us today. We appreciate your, your presence. And uh, we will do something new this morning. Um, since we are uh, Brother Rex hook us up in YouTube, and uh, we will do a uh, also a Facebook Live this morning, so that we can uh, get the word out as much as much as we can to to everybody. Um, this morning, let me let me just plug this in. Thank you, brother uh, Alex, for reading our scripture. And uh, okay, in Revelation chapter three, verse seven and eight, we'll go ahead and read again our scripture reading this morning. Okay. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, it says, What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have a little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Now, in this verse, my dear brethren and friends, uh, are realities of life. There will be a time, a door will be open for us for a time being. And many people see this as an opportunity, right? And many people also fear this open door. Why? Because this open door somehow they want it to be closed for a time because they are not ready to face the judgment. So they are seeing this open door as a judgment. Okay? So some feared this open door. And there will also be a time that a door will be closed to us. And no matter what we do, we cannot open it. And then for many, this represents rejections. A missed opportunity. Now, for some others, this is a good sign. At least, so they think the door towards judgment is still closed and that they have time to amend uh, their mistakes in life. So you see, it is all about perspective. How you see things. Some folks see the open door as an opportunity. Some, they fear the open door. Some people see the closed door as rejections. Some see it as also a time to reflect. Right? So again, it is a matter of perspective. Now this morning, we will talk about perspective. We will talk about rejection perspective. How we view rejection. And hopefully, this will help us handle rejections. You know, being denied, being rejected, the door being closed, and being said no most of the time. You know, these things are not fun. They are not fun, right? It hurts us. We feel down. You know, it sucks all the energy from us. Now, to give you an example, you are all dressed up, ready for that interview. You know, you look smart, 
Okay, you look fresh, neat, and tidy and all. Going to that job interview. Then after being rejected at the job interview, now you look like this. As if you just went from the hospital, have had so many surgeries. You know, but before you look all smart. You look handsome. Just like all the men here. And you look beautiful just like all the women here. But after that, you know, it wears you down. Okay. Now, for some, being rejected and denied, it's a big thing, right? Now, who can blame them? And you know what? I will tell you a secret. I will tell you a secret. And I hope that you don't tell this to anybody. Just between you and me, all of us in this room, and those out there in the Zoom, and all out there in our Facebook Live, just all of us. Okay? Don't tell this to anybody. I am Mr. Rejection. I am Mr. Denied. I am Mr. Closed Door. I am Mr. No. You know, uh, coming to America is a full of rejection for me. You know, I have never been rejected and denied so many times in my whole life. Being here, I am denied so many times. Come on. You know, first, you know, I applied for a postpaid plan. <laughs> I got denied. And then they told me to come back after three months so that they could assess my uh, credit standing. So I went back after three months. And guess what? I got denied. And then after that, they told me, oh, you come back again after three months. So you have six months. So I came back after three months. And guess what? I got denied. All right. And then I applied twice for a credit in, to this uh, big retail and warehouse uh, outlet store here. Twice. And guess what? I got denied. And then last Thursday, I applied for a credit card. And then Friday, the bank called me up. And they said I was denied. <laughs> and, you know, and, and other places and other stores, all of them said, no, you're denied, you know. And you know what? I got used to it. I got used to it, and it feels good actually. <laughs> it feels good. Yeah. So, well, I understand the rejections, but. Seriously, uh, on, on a serious note, rejections hurt many of us. It hurts so many people. It affects all of us, no matter what age, what gender you have. Okay? When the door of opportunity closes to us, it makes us think of our competency, of our abilities. You know, rejections, denials, uh, the closing of doors, the no, you know, oftentimes, leave us questioning our abilities. Am I really good enough? Right. You question yourself. Am I good enough? Do I have what it takes to be successful? Right. Now, sometimes we go to the extent of questioning our moral values. Right. Am I a bad person? Am I a bad person that I deserve all of these rejections, all of these denials? Is God punishing me? No. You are not only questioning your competency, your abilities, but you are now questioning your moral values. You are now questioning your relationship with God and how God thinks about you. Now, all of these things, these things and other types of rejections, you know, at first glance, they are all negatives, right? We treat it as a negative. You know, most of, most of us will take this as an unfortunate event. But the question is, are they? Are they an unfortunate event, right? Are they really bad for you? Are they really bad for me? Now, there are two ways to look at these things, the negative way and the positive way. Again, it all depends on how you look at things. 
it, may, it all depends on your perspective. Now, this morning again, we will try to shed some light on these things, how to train our mind to look at the possibilities of blessings amidst the rejections, amidst the no's, amidst the denials, amidst the closed doors, and look at what the Bible has to say about it. 250, 4, 6, and 1. I want you to remember that number. That is not my cell phone number. 250. 250 is corporate job openings that attracts 250 resumes. Okay. Now, the four and six. Out of these candidates, four to six will be interviewed. Come on. Out of the 250 resumes, according to surveys, four to six out of these 250 will only be interviewed. Now, let's go to the one. The one will only, only one will get the job. So out of 250, four to six people will be interviewed and only one will get the job. Wow. Wow. Zero, zero, 004, that is not James Bond. Uh, zero, zero, 004, that is the percentage of likelihood you will be hired. One over 250 will get you 0.004%. Can you imagine? Out of the 250, 249 will be rejected and only one will get the job. Perspective number one, rejection can and will happen. According to experts, you know, rejection, a rejectionless life is highly impossible. It is impossible to have a rejection-free life. You know, the possibility of rejection can come from varying aspects of our life. When you apply for a job, when you present a business proposal, when you throw in a sales pitch, right? And when you court a woman, how many times do men get rejected? And when your family disapprove of the man or the woman that you are about to marry, when your group did not accept your ideas or your proposal, and many other things. So one way or another, we will be rejected. That is the reality of life. According to Sharon Martin, a psychotherapist, he's, she said on today.com, Rejection comes with the territory of any relationship. If you have a relationship, you can be rejected and you will be rejected. Any goal. If you set up any goal, chances are there will become a time in your life that you will miss the opportunity. Anything you set out to do. Rejection comes with the territory of any relationship, any goal, anything you set out to do. Accept. Rejection. Don't fret. Accept and don't regret. Now look at the statistics that I've showed you a while ago. You are not alone. If you are rejected, if you are denied, if you feel down, you are not alone. Everybody, for that matter, was rejected in one way or another in their lifetime. You know, just like everybody, accept it and don't fret. You know, don't sit too long and thinking about what happened. Don't stop pursuing your dreams. Now, you know, you remember, you can't go anywhere when you are still. Remember that. You have to move forward. You have to pursue your dreams. You know, Jesus was rejected so many times in his life. In his lifetime, during his mission, his ministry, here on earth, he was rejected by his own hometown. In John chapter 1, verse 1, he came to his own people and even they rejected him. Matthew 13, he went to his hometown and taught the people in the synagogue and they were amazed. They said, where did this man get his wisdom and this power to do miracles? He is just the son of a carpenter. 
So the people, verse 57, so the people were upset with Jesus. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his hometown and in his own home. In Mark chapter 3, 21, when his family heard what was happening, they tried to take him away. He's out of his mind, they said. And he was denied three times by no less than Peter. Peter denied Jesus Christ three times, his very own apostle. You see, the very close people to Jesus Christ rejected him. And you are not alone in being rejected. Accept rejections and don't regret it. Number one, accept rejection and don't fret. Accept rejection and don't regret it. As one said, rejection is better than regret, according to Anonymous. I keep on looking who Anonymous is. Until now, I cannot find out who he is. So the reason why it is better than regret is that, you know, in rejection, at least you did try something. You did try something rather than not trying at all. Right? And living with the regret of what could have been. You might be sitting all day long, all week long, and thinking about it. What if I tried it? What if? What could have been? You know? And you will never get the answer because you never did try. You miss your opportunity. Regrets will leave you at a loss for something that might be something good or could have been because you did not take a shot at it. And I, I remember just like love, everybody loves love. Just like love. It is better to voice out your love and be rejected than never voice it out at all. Who knows? That woman or that lady might also be in love with you. You will never know unless you try. Right? So accept it. Our brain can cope up with emotional rejection over time, just as it does with physical pain. Perspective number two. Only one is needed. In rejection, in many situations, only time will be needed. Of course. You apply for the position, we apply for the position with the expectation of being hired, of course. The truth of the matter is only one, just a few, will get the job. As we have said, accept the possibility that you might not get hired. Now, what do you need to do? You need to move forward. Move forward. Mark 8, 31, then he began to teach them that it was necessary for the Son of Man to suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, be killed, and rise after three days. Now, Jesus knew that he will be rejected. Now, this, he will be despised, he will, he will suffer greatly, but he did not let this deter him from doing what he is supposed to do. Did, these things did not stop him. He relentlessly pursued and fulfilled God's purpose for him. He just keeps on moving. He just keeps moving forward. Now, I want all of us to move forward. Pursue your dreams and fulfill your plans for yourself, fulfill your plans for your loved ones. Rejection is a common occurrence. Learning that early and often will help you build up the tolerance and resistance to keep going and keep trying, according to Kevin Page. You know, just keep on going and keep on trying. You will soon hit that mark. You will soon get that job. You know, nobody becomes a winner by quitting. Right? Nobody becomes a winner by quitting. You know, I find this quote to be true. You know, I already build up my own tolerance and 
you know, my, my, my own resistance to my credit application. So I got used to it. I just keep on trying. I just keep on trying. You know what? Moving forward is a courage in itself. It is a courage. If you just move forward, when you continue knocking on those closed doors, soon, long enough, if you continue knocking on those doors, there would be one who would pick, take a pick at you. And soon, that person might open the door for you if you just continue knocking on that door. See, continuously knocking on doors, my dear brothers and friends, means you are truly seeking an opportunity. If you are a Christian, if you continuously knock on doors, you are looking for opportunity to spread the good news. You are continuously trying to deliver the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 4, but to stop this thing from spreading and further among the people, we must warn them not to, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. So the apostles were called in and they were advised not to preach and tell about the name of Jesus Christ. But in 19 and 20, but Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? To serve you or to serve our master? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. So they just move forward. In Acts chapter 5, a similar thing happened. His speech referring to Gamaliel, Gamaliel's speech persuaded them. They called the apostle in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. You see, they beat up the apostles again. They beat them. And then they asked them and ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus Christ. But you know, the apostles, they are hard-headed. They are stubborn. As we call it in Tagalog, matigas ang ulo. They are stubborn. In verse 41 and 42, the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they never what they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Praise God, hallelujah! Praise God, indeed. And just like the apostles and the disciples, you know, uh, before us, they never stop teaching and proclaiming Jesus Christ. And there are many Christians today that never stop preaching Jesus Christ, even the countless rejections, and thank God for their lives. They move forward because without them, you or I may not be a Christian. Because of those relentless individuals, because of our brothers and sisters in Christ who just move forward despite the adversaries. Thank God for their lives. Thank God for them, that they keep moving forward. And we have now the gospel in us. You know, without them ever moving forward, we might not have heard and obeyed the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Perspective number three. They don't see what you have to offer. When we are rejected, it doesn't need, I want you to listen to this, it doesn't need, it doesn't mean that you are incapable. When you got rejected, when you get denied, it doesn't mean you are not capable. You are not, you are incompetent. It doesn't mean that. The reality is the reason why you apply and the reason why you go to that business meeting presentation is because you are capable. 
You are capable. That's why you are there. You are capable. You believe in yourself and that you have something to offer. They just don't see it the way you see it. They just don't see the value that you have. Is it your loss? I don't think so. Maybe their loss, not yours. You're familiar with Google, right? According to Forbes.com, you know, Google's co-founders, they did not find their startup easy. They approached an investor and they wanted to sell Google during those times for just one million dollars, US dollars. You know, so they could go back and focus on their school, you know, school work. And the prospective investor buyer declined. And just after five months of trying to sell Google, it went up to $25 million. Today, today, it is one of the most valuable companies in the world. Imagine if they had given up fundraising or sold it back then, they could have lost the opportunity. Now, according to finance, or Yahoo Finance, as of May this year, Google had a market capitalization of, guess what, 1.37 trillion US dollars. Just a few of the handful who have a capitalization of 1 trillion US dollars. Have you ever seen Shark Tank? Shark Tank? I'm a fan of Shark Tank. You have this in your home? Mr. Jesse is <laughs> you have this in your home? I think most of US uh, homes have this ring doorbell. You know, ring doorbell founder and inventor, he appeared on Shark Tank in 2013. He was asking for 700,000 for a 10% of equity in his company, 700,000 investment. You know, and there was an offer that was made, but the founder did not accept the offer because for him it was too low. And no other, uh, no other in the Shark Tank made an offer because they, didn't, they did not see any value at the time for the ring doorbell because it is just probably new in the market, right? But guess what? After its appearance on Shark Tank, the sales grew high and it is sky you know, uh, went sky high. Fast forward to February 2018, five years after, the, uh, the ring doorbell was sold to Amazon for a whooping one billion US dollars. 2013, he was only asking for 700,000 for a 10% equity. But 2018, it was sold to Amazon for 1 billion US dollars. And also in the year 2018, guess what? The producer of Shark Tank, the very show that he was in in 2013, he was called to be a guest Shark Tank. He went back to Shark Tank and be a guest investor. And this is very ironic. The very show that rejected him, but at the same time, the very show that catapulted him to where he is now. You see, these are just two of many people that were rejected because other people did not see the value in them. Now, here's a valuable lesson. Know your worth. Know your worth. Know your value, my dear brethren and friends. Your value does not decrease based on someone's inability to see your worth. That is right. And that is right. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter knew but his work is. You know, people rejected them. The apostles, 
People rejected, rejected them when they were with Jesus Christ, when they were trying to preach and help Jesus Christ, you know, let the word out. They missed what Jesus and the apostles had to offer. In, in this particular scenario, in Acts chapter 3, when this lame man who was unable to, to walk from birth, since birth, when he was, he, this, this lame man was brought every day to the temple gate to beg for money. And then when Peter and John was walking in front of him, he asked Peter and John for money. And then, guess what? Peter and John gave him much more than money can offer. Now, what did Peter give the lame man? It says there. Peter said, but I, what I will have, or but what I have, I will give you. You see, Peter knew that what he has and what he is worth for that lame man. And what does he have? And look again. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He has Jesus Christ to give. Did you get that? Hallelujah. People reject us because they don't know our value and they don't know what we really have to offer. They assume they know, but they are mistaken. You know, I have brought the gospel to many people and shared the name of Jesus Christ. Some accepted, accepted it and some did not. When the pandemic hit all of us, left and right, I have received so many messages for prayer. And I told those prayer requests that I will do pray for them. And I did pray for them. You know, oftentimes, it is late in the ball game that people will see your work and how good you really are and the message that you have to give to them. Remember when Noah built the ark, the people thought that probably Noah was crazy. He was a full man, you know, building an ark where not a single drop of rain was inevitable. They did not see any value in Noah and in the ark. But lo and behold, the rain came and starts flooding the world. Now they see the value of Noah and they see the value of the ark. Now going back to the lame man, when this lame man asked Peter and John for money, Peter looked at him. And directly Peter said to him, Look at us. If you will read uh, the book, uh, Acts chapter 3. Peter said, look at us. You know, the funny thing was, the layman gave his full attention to Peter and John. You know, probably thinking, you know, oh boy, this is jackpot. They have money, all right. No, he was anticipating that. That's why he gave his, he gave his full attention because he was thinking that Peter and John will give him money, you know. The lame man's reaction was probably so, so happy. But you know what? What happened next was something beautiful to see. Or before that, when Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, you know, probably that lame man's face was so happy, probably after Peter said that, no money. He was probably disappointed. He was probably disappointed, but look, you know, something beautiful happened. Something beautiful happened. You know, a coincidence. Why probably, you know, that gate where the layman was, you know, was called beautiful because something beautiful happened at that day. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. He was jumping up and down. Yes, Lord, amen. You know, he was praising God for what the apostles did to him. He received more than what money 
can buy and can do to him. He was on his feet. You know, he was jumping probably like crazy you know, and praising God. And I cannot blame him. And why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? For all his life, he was a lame man. He was unable to walk. If it happens to us, maybe we will be doing the same. We will be jumping up and down with our voices so loud that our neighbors can hear our praises to God. And probably it happened to us already. Brethren and friends, maybe the next time we will be rejected, we can look at it at a, from a different vantage point, you know, a different perspective. Maybe in this way, it can make our lives a bit better and happier despite the rejections. Even in the midst of rejections, you know, we can still raise our hands towards heaven and praise God and say to God and within our hearts, what a wonderful and awesome God I am serving. Amen. Finally, let me leave you with this final thought. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. My dear brothers, sisters, and friends, the gospel is yours. I hope this will give you a new perspective about rejection to be a bit happier in life, and to be a bit grateful to what you have from the Lord. Now, Lord willing, next Sunday, we will do the second part. There's always more. <laughs> There's actually a second part for this. You know, Lord willing, you'll be here, and I'll be sharing the second part to all of you. The gospel is yours. Now we will sing the song of invitation. I invite those who have not yet accepted the Lord in the proper way to come forward. Let this congregation help you in your spiritual journey. And those who would like to be prayed upon, may you come forward and we will pray for you. And um, after the, uh, the uh, song of invitation, we will be calling a, a brother just before the prayer. Uh, this brother reached out to me and uh, asking for everybody to help him and offer a prayer for him. So after the uh, song of invitation, I will call the, this, this brother of ours and uh, we will all pray for him. Shall we all stand as we sing the song of invitation?